This episode of The Blair Wire Project is sponsored by BetterHelp. You guys know I am a big advocate of therapy. I've been in therapy several times in my life, and it's always been a very rewarding experience. I know it's something that has a lot of stigma, but there are ways that you can get therapy now that are not so traditional. This is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. If you're thinking of starting a therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Blair today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Blair. And thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode of the Blair White Project. Hey guys, welcome back to the Blair White Project. So I had an insane night last night, to say the least. I did a show here in Austin with, it was Timcast Live. And you guys know I've been on Timcast a bunch of times and occasionally sort of he comes to Austin and we do a thing with Alex Jones, Michael Malice, myself. Last night it was Alex Stein, Alex Jones, Michael Malice, the whole Timcast crew. We did a sold out show on 6th Street here in Austin and it was <laughs> it was a night to remember. Let's just say that we were all pretty drunk or I won't say all. I was pretty drunk. Alex Jones was pretty drunk on stage and things just got really, really chaotic. I believe it was too raw and too real for YouTube. So I think the only place you can see it is Rumble, which I guess is fitting. Uh, but needless to say, um, you know, whenever our crew sort of gets together and does content all at the same time, it's just always an insane, an insane night. So Shout out to everyone who came to see us on 6th Street in Austin last night. Like I said, it was a sold out show and it was cool to sort of, you know, be like, okay, you know, I've lived here in Austin for about a year and a half. Just did a sold out show on the main strip of the city I live in. I feel like I kind of made it. It's kind of my city now. Did my thing, had fun. Um, and I just appreciate everyone for coming out. So with that being said, we're actually opening this with me giving Alex Jones a shout out for the simple fact that recently on his show, you may have seen this clip going around on Twitter, recently on his show, a caller called <laughs> in uh, to InfoWars, Alex Jones show, and tried to get him to bash me. And it was really cringe, but Alex handled it with so much class and he said some really nice things about me. So I wanted to play that and just, I have a message after that that I want to tell you guys about. So here we go. Let's, let's listen to what Alex Jones had to say about Blair White. Hello, Alex. I've uh, been listening for a few years now. I get what you're saying about the transgender and how it's evil. Um, but when you talk about Blair White, it's kind of confusing. Like, you think he looks good or something? Um, I think Blair's a very smart, nice person. That's what I said. And Blair White speaks out against the targeting of children. Uh, Blair White came on like 10 years ago when Blair first went public as a, per as a, as a transgender person and said she was against the left and that they didn't speak for her. So I'm not judging people. It is a nice person, a smart person, a person I like, okay? I, I think Blair White's a nice person. Blair White really feels like a woman and it is not a bad person and I'm not attacking her because she feels like she's a woman. So here's the thing. This was a cut down clip to about 40 seconds, but it was like a 10 minute rant about how just with Alex defending me. And I put this in the podcast here today to say that judging a book by its cover or more specifically the character depiction by the corporate press of someone is a lesson that I have learned in this industry and in my experience in the seven years I've been doing this and meeting so many people that there is, there's always an image of someone, right? So like the image of Alex Jones surely is that he hates trans people. He's not cool with trans people. The image of Blair White is that Blair White hangs out with people who don't really like trans people. It's not the effing case, right? And it's so crazy because this clip would never get traction on left-wing Twitter or left-wing YouTube or anything, right? Like they'll run all day, every day with Alex Jones being transphobic and bigoted and whatever, but they won't ever show this. And I think it's just very important to state that people like Alex, for all the mistakes he's made that he's will admit to and that I've talked about with him when he was on this podcast and, and whatever, it's like Alex is like me in the sense of 
I believe in individualism. I believe in judging people based on the merit and the content of their character. And that's something that we're severely lacking in this world and something that conservatives lately, some of them are also lacking, right? There's this broad brush being painted of all trans people because you have this one and that one. And y'all know I be calling out all the trans, <laughs> but we can't let collectivism take over. We can't let groupthink take over. No matter how much bad news comes out about a certain community, no matter how much whatever, it's not the way to go. And so I just wanted to put this on here because he defended me for 10 minutes on his podcast. I wanted to at least give him a shout out on mine and say, thank you so much, Alex. You know, people question, Blair, why do you associate with someone like Alex Jones when, when you know, the Sandy Hook thing? And he got that wrong and he admits to getting that wrong. And this is America. People are allowed to get things wrong, even if they're heinously wrong, even if they're you know, wrong about something that's incredibly emotionally charged. People are allowed to get things wrong. He's admitted that he was wrong about that, right? And so no one's defending any of that. But what I am saying is I've met a lot of mainstream celebrities, public figures throughout my years of living in LA and just my years of doing YouTube. And y'all aren't ready for this conversation but Alex Jones is a better person than all of them. <laughs> Y'all sit up here and suck in and like deep throat this corporate press narrative about all these goody two shoe celebrities that you think have this perfect image and are just saints and just are so virtuous and so good. And they're the demons. That's what y'all don't know. They're the demons. You know how many people I've met throughout this journey that have just this amazing public image darlings of the corporate press say a bad word about them on social media and you're going to get attacked by the fucking mob and they're the devil behind closed doors and so anyone who wants to question why do you associate with alex jones alex wears his flaws right up front and that's the kind of person i like so am I best friends with Alex Jones? No, we come together when, when we need to, like last night for the show. He defends me on his show. I'll defend him on mine where he needs to be defended. And I have to say, there's a whole lot of people out here walking around with protect trans kids shirts that have no actual trans people in their lives and don't actually give a damn about actual trans people. There's virtue signaling to other non-trans people, whereas Alex Jones clearly here has a trans friend in his life that he's willing to go to bat for no matter how many conservatives are watching him and getting upset about it. Last night, we took a picture. I'll put it up on the screen. And he was he was the one who was like, we need to take another picture and piss more conservatives off. Alex Jones said that. He said, we got to take another picture and piss more conservatives off. So the idea that he's some like hateful person it's just like get it together he when it comes to the trans stuff he speaks against like the sexualization of kids which if you're a normal person you should be too so shout out to alex just wanted to give him a quick thank you and you guys won you won because i am talking about the bud light dylan mulvaney scandal of all scandals controversy of all controversies I have avoided talking about this because Dylan Mulvaney is, in my opinion, the worst thing to happen to the trans community. And we had a trans shooter. Maybe that sounds extreme. I don't care. I'm going to say it. And I've actually changed my position on Dylan Mulvaney. There was a time when I said that Dylan Mulvaney, you know, even though Dylan's incredibly cringe, Dylan's still trans. I genuinely believe that. When I made my first main channel video, now I actually don't think that. I actually think Dylan's just an actor. Um, I've seen some pretty compelling evidence of like back before Dylan blew up on in TikTok and was trying every trend every like social justice trend until trans worked and then he ran with it. There's a lot of really sketchy things I don't understand. And I really don't care who says I'm being mean. This is just trans 101. This is coming from a trans woman who's transitioned. This is the reality. Dylan got facial feminization surgery, which on its face, you may say, oh, that means Dylan is really trans. The surgery Dylan got costs tens of thousands of dollars from 
a surgeon who's very well known in LA actually did Caitlyn Jenner surgery. I actually had a consultation with that surgeon at the beginning of my transition. Thank God it didn't go because he has a reputation for giving everyone the same face and aging the girls, which is why Dylan literally aged 20 years. Dylan's like 26. Dylan looks 46. With that being said, I don't understand why Dylan can get a surgery that costs tens of thousands of dollars, but Dylan can't pay a couple hundred bucks for laser hair removal. Is it because with those slight tweaks to the forehead and the jaw, if Dylan ever goes back to being male, Dylan can still be. But if you get rid of the facial hair, that's like a telltale sign. Am I, am I cra- like I it doesn't make sense why you would get a surgery that costs tens of thousands of dollars and you would not get laser hair removal on your face that costs a couple hundred bucks. It doesn't make sense to me. It also doesn't make sense to me that Dylan's reportedly been on hormones for a year. I don't care who wants to say Blair is not a doctor. Dylan is so not on hormones. I know what hormones do to the body. I know like Dylan is just not on hormones. I'm back to, and it can change. I can keep changing my opinion on Dylan. But as of now, my opinion has flip-flopped back to, I don't think Dylan is trans. I think Dylan is an actor. I will say, I think that the obsession that a lot of conservatives have with Dylan is very overblown and strange. I can't log on to my Twitter without people. It's nothing from conservative accounts but Dylan Mulvaney. And a lot of these conservatives that claim to want him to go away and don't want him to be getting all these brand deals, right? You're the reason why. All these brand deals, Bud Light, Nike, the blender thing, are all coming to Dylan because, wow, who would have thought that obsessively talking about every brand deal Dylan gets and making sure to repost the advertisement itself and show the product doesn't stop an influencer from getting more brand deals. Do you know how any of this works? I don't understand. I don't think it's like giving in to anything to just be like, I'm going to ignore that. And y'all can call me hypocrite. I'm, I'm not trying to stop Dylan from getting any bags. I'm reacting to Dylan getting these bags. I don't care. Like if Dylan wants to get these sponsorships, every influencer gets sponsorships. I have an ad in this video, right? It's like, granted, I'm not getting Bud Light money. And it has been very entertaining for the past couple weeks, everyone's saying it should have been me. It should have been me. I don't drink that shit, girl. I'm not drinking Bud Light. I'm not getting that bloat. And if I wanted to taste pee, I would be more adventurous in my sex life, which I'm not. And it's not going to happen, Miss Thane. It's definitely an odd choice for Dylan to be the poster person of Bud Light. And they're kind of walking it back and they release a statement saying they didn't intend for anything to be this divisive, well, you probably shouldn't have picked someone like Dylan Mulvaney if you didn't want to be divisive, right? And I actually don't respect, I would respect Bud Light more if Bud Light just didn't say anything and just stuck by the influencer they chose to hire for the gig than to like half-ass apologize for it. I'm not really here for that. I think that's pussy shit. Um, Listen, There's a reason I think the corporate press has made Dylan Mulvaney the face of trans people. And I personally believe Dylan Mulvaney is one of the worst things to happen to the trans community in the sense that Dylan just is a lightning rod for so much hate that then spreads out to other people. So as much as Dylan wants to be on camera talking about stop trans hate, okay, then stop some of the shit you're doing because you're causing it. And I don't think I'm blaming the victim. A lot of Dylan's actions are incredibly insulting to women and trans people. And make trans people out to look like a caricature. I'm sorry, but in a world where trans people are still trying to get their footing and still trying to have the world understand us and still fighting against so many negative stereotypes and still fighting against like, oh, we got a shooter over here. We got this one over here. You do have to hold yourself with some dignity, some class and some grace. And that doesn't mean you have to be a Blair White. And, talk, and, and behave the way I do or talk about the things I do. Or hold, I'm sometimes a mess myself and I'm not always perfect, but be making yourself into a joke like this, especially when I don't even think that you're trans anymore, Dylan, that's a problem. 
The problem is you. So I just like, I don't, I don't know what to do about the Dylan stuff other than when Dylan does things worth criticizing, criticize them. But if you're a conservative and you want Dylan Mulvaney to stop getting brand deals, maybe don't repost the ads that Dylan creates. Because there's supposedly this huge boycott that's been going on, you know, against Bud Light. And they had like a momentary dip in sales and now they're already back up. So it's not working. The tactic's not working. The boycott's not working. Just ignore Dylan. And my issue with Dylan isn't even like just that Dylan is cringe and doing ads because there's a lot of celebrities and influencers that are cringe and do sponsorships and endorsements and get all that coin, right? My issue has always been that Dylan advocates for children transitioning. Dylan advocates for children being sterilized. Something that I don't even think Dylan's willing to do to his own adult body because it doesn't even look like Dylan's on hormones. And I'm sorry, but there is, there is, even when you transition at the age that Dylan is transitioning, there is a change that happens to the body. And you can see it not taking place. So... I don't know what to tell you. Next. Teen kicked off plane over comments about passenger slammed as fat phobic. This article kills me. It really kills me. A Reddit user shared their nightmare experience ahead of a 12 hour flight. Of course, it's a 12 hour flight, which fed to them being led to them being kicked off a plane before it could even take off. The 18 year old Redditor was enraged to see an obese man in the seat next to his who he felt was taking up some of his space. This led to an uncomfortable scene as he demanded another seat. The Federal Aviation Administration reported 2,400 unruly passengers in 2022, 831 of whom were officially investigated. More than 8.4 million was, uh, I guess that's irrelevant information. Unhappy about being squeezed next to the overweight man, um, the user spoke to a flight attendant to request another seat. However, he was told the flight was full and moving was not an option. I asked the flight attendant how it's possible that my seat's still rendered as available if it's being used for someone's literal roles. Now, here we go. Here's the thing. There is a place for empathy, but I would absolutely be pissed if I didn't have my seat on a 12-hour flight because someone was just too fat. And I think that there's a personal responsibility that if you are a person that is that big, you need to play you need you need you need to pay for first class sis it, it's just a consideration thing right like i've definitely been next to like there was this one time where i was flying with a friend and i was next to someone who was very very overweight and she was definitely in half of my seat luckily my friend is very small so i was able to take like half of his seat and so like it wasn't that bad but like if i was sitting next to like a person that even was like regular size on the other side, I would have been, I wouldn't have had a seat and that's not fair. So this the very good example of this. I have um, a friend who is a power lifter and he's really big and he's aware that he, you know, not on an obesity side, but just like a muscle side is going to take up the seat of the person next to him. And as a consideration thing, he always pays for first class. He's like, I don't want to pay for first class. It sucks to pay for extra, but I'm not taking up someone else's seat. So I think the responsibility is on you if you are that big and you're taking up someone's seat. And I would be mad too if I was this person. Do I remember that Sydney Watson article? She was like in between the two big ass people and she got like dragged for that. Right? I mean, better solution. Can we just upgrade like seats on planes? Why do we have the same seats on planes that we've had since the 90s? Is it even the 90s? I feel like flights are probably better in the 90s, the early 2000s. We could do with bigger seats for everyone. So I, I feel for this person. All right. New bill in Canada would prosecute anyone that misgendered, criticized, or protested against transgenderism. Anyone deemed transphobic, homophobic, or offensive would face prosecution and a $25,000 fine. Let's watch this clip. Firstly, it enables the Attorney General to create a 2S LGBTQI plus community safety zone what? to prohibit within 100 meters of the property any homophobic, transphobic act of intimidation, threat, offensive threats, offensive remarks, protest, disturbance, and distribution of hate propaganda within the meaning of the uh, criminal code. It also comes with it a penalty of $25,000 if prosecuted successfully. 
So first of all, can we address, if you're an audio listener, I've never seen anything more Canada than this shot. This, what is this, a, a non-binary person probably speaking, is at a rainbow podium talking about protect 2SLLGBTQI+. What the fuck is that? No, 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 what is that? Put it in the comments. What's the two? What's the S? What's the plus? I don't understand this. I of all people should understand this. I am a tranny. Why am I so disconnected from what the LGBT community is, which is now 2S LGBT? She couldn't even say it. She's up here advocating for a bill for these people. And it was like stuttering, even saying the acronym. If you can't say it, no one else can, sister. Miss Thing. Miss Bitch. And then, okay, so the reason this is so Canada, you got this non-binary at the rainbow podium. I'm talking about 2SL. You have two busted, crusted, and disgusted looking drag queens in the back. And then just two hoes wearing masks in the back. It's 2023. Why are you wearing masks? Why are drag queens seen as serious individuals that need to be up promoting legislation? Drag queens are literal clowns. They're clowns, baby. And that's not being offensive. That's what they are. Clowns are a form of entertainment. I don't look down on people who are clowns. And I don't look down on drag queens unless they're doing shit with kids. Not exactly the face of seriousness when you're trying to pass a bill, right? I could see if there was maybe some fuck, some trans people in the back. Like, or at least that host trans. But trans, or drag Jessica Simpson in the back and the green vomit hair, what is that? And are these the individuals to be advocating for your proposed legislation? I don't know. But let's get into the actual legislation. Demented and also very Canada. So basically to break this down, this law would create certain zones where you couldn't speak ill of people in the 2SLGBTQI plus community. Let me throw up. So there's zones that they want to create in Canada where you can't say certain things. How demented. And people want to say, oh, well, it's Canada. I often say this type of legislation is always, it starts in Canada, starts in the UK, and then it comes here. And then we're always last to correct it too, right? Same with all the trans kids stuff. Started in all these countries, Canada still doing it, but all these, you know, European countries, and now we're going strong with it, even though they're backing down. Insane. You see all these memes about the slippery slope, right? About like, all they wanted was marriage, and now they're up here talking about, actually, we have certain zones where you can't say certain things if they're offensive or if they're hate speech. Not to mention how subjective that term is. Disgusting. You know, here's the thing. I have to say, I have been very disaffected, disillusioned, disgusted, busted, crusted with the idea of the LGBT community in general. I'm kind of done with it. Not to sit here and act like I'm not trans. Everyone likes to act like, where thinks she's cis? No, I don't. I know I'm a whole tranny. And everyone else knows I'm a whole tranny. But this idea of this like collective like group that I'm inherently a part of because I have tits and because I'm on estrogen, but I was born male, that means I got shit in common with the trans guy Condoleezza Rice up here talking about protect 2S LGBT. I don't. I have nothing in common with a single person on this stage. And so the idea that like I'm supposed to feel any semblance of loyalty to that, I don't. So I will always be here for LGBT individuals who I find cool and individuals in any group that I find cool, by the way. I met a Scientologist once I was cool with. We didn't talk much about it. I was like, oh, you're a Scientologist? We're going to keep that. We're going to maybe get to that later. When we get a little closer, I can talk about it and I can really get into it. But it's just, it's just like 
I'm so sick of the group shit, right? I'm all about individuals. I'm all about hyper individuals. I'm all about people who are just themselves and not part of some cult. This is a cult. This is a cult that is endorsed by the government. This is a cult that is endorsed by the corporate press. And I don't relate to it. And I'm not going to relate to it. Especially the farther this shit goes. This is, this is literally like a parody. This is a parody. This is not some shit that even in like 2014, 2015, you could make up. And why is that hell on the left dressed like a fairy? Like what? These are not serious people. But somehow they've been given the position to enact serious legislation that would fine people $25,000 for saying something offensive. Disgusting. Disgusting. And if that's the type of pro-trans legislation that I'm supposed to be on board with because I'm simply trans, go fuck yourself. Hard. So no, I'm not messing with that. This episode of the Blair White Project is sponsored by BetterHelp. Last summer, I went through a rough patch where I felt like I needed to talk to a therapist, even though I had doubts that it would help. I was wrong and it helped me so much. And so I really fight against the stigma of therapy and the idea that it's, you know, not going to help people who need it. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Hi, I've been through a few changes in my life and I may or may not have needed someone to help talk me through those things. And sometimes I didn't have that person and I wish that I did. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want. And sometimes we don't know why we react the way we do until we talk through these things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major traumas or really huge situations, although obviously it's great for those things as well. And I'm so much comfortable in a setting like BetterHelp because you can actually talk remotely. You don't have to sit in the conventional, you know, going through traffic, going to a therapist's office, sitting on a couch, feeling uncomfortable. It's your, you in your own space and it's so much more comfortable. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Blair today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Blair. And thank you so much for, to BetterHelp for being a loyal sponsor of the Blair White Project. And now on to the rest of the episode of the podcast. Oh my God. This next story, nightmare. Everyone wants to talk me to talk about the Mr. Beast trans thing. And I'm going to do a main channel video, I believe. So we're just going to touch on it briefly here. But I have to say, I have a lot of opinions. So if you don't know, everyone knows. Mr. Beast, supposedly right-hand man, I guess, uh, is transitioning, has a wife and kids. And here's my unpopular opinion. I don't think that if you transition, I think that if you transition when you have a wife and children, there are few things that parallel that level of selfishness. And I don't care who's mad about it. And I don't care who's going to say, what about Caitlyn Jenner? You like Caitlyn Jenner? So I also think that was a selfish decision, but I think that it's a little different because Caitlyn's like a gajillionaire. And those kids are fine, right? But the average person, that's like an extreme circumstance, right? But the average person, this guy has a wife and kids and you're transitioning and you're relinquishing your duty as a man to those kids and to that woman, absolutely disgusting. Because even if you want to go on board with the idea that Chris is now a woman, so what, that means his wife just has to be in a lesbian relationship now because you want to change? That's selfish, So now these kids lose a dad because you want to change? Selfish. I don't like it. I've always thought it was messed up. I've always thought it was weird. I've always thought it was incredibly selfish. So that's the first thing. A lot of people are upset about the fact that, you know, Mr. Beast channel is an apolitical channel. It's a lot of kids who watch. And so it's like, well, what are the kids going to be learning? That I'm a little less upset about only if... They take a stance to not preach the ideology. If it's just that Chris is just on camera and looks different, I don't think that's like 
harming children in a way that people are being so dramatic about. But if they're going to be talking about the ideology and if they're going to be, you know, branding, you know, that transitioning is, you know, all the talking points, right? Like life-saving medication that stops kids from, from deleting themselves and blah, 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 which correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if they've done that or if they're making that a thing on the channel. If they are, that's an issue for me. And I'll be calling that out. But I just think like the idea that you transition when you have a wife and kids is so gross to me. I don't care about living your truth. Figure out your truth before you involve other people in it. Right? And there's another, there's another controversial take. I don't care who's mad. This is 2023. If you can't figure out your life and what you want to be before you have multiple kids and get married and make a, dev, a like a devotion to those people, you're just a weak ass individual. I don't care. There's, it's like, maybe I'm coming from like a very, um, my own perspective here and I have some, some blinders and some ignorance going on. I will be ignorant. Let me be ignorant for a couple minutes. I knew what I was at like 14 and I know not everyone does. And I get that. But these people who like don't figure it out until like 30, 40 have these kids. It's like, ew, don't involve kids and bring kids into this world and then be like, actually, I'm going to yoink myself out of their life and not be their, their dad anymore. Disgusting. But the other issue is there's some tweets from Chris. There's some disturbing stuff in Chris's past. Here's a tweet from Chris. Nothing gets my knob a cranking like some lolly, which I had to search on Twitter what lolly is. Bad decision. Don't search it. But it's basically anime that depicts underage girls in an inappropriate way. Right? Not illegal, but definitely disgusting. There's another tweet from Chris saying, that bitch looks good for a four-year-old. Not exactly cute. Not exactly the kind of tweets you want resurfacing. Right? Like, ew. Then there's the other issue. Here's a tweet. Chris from Mr. B, this is someone else's words. Chris from Mr. Beast is literally grooming his son. He forced his young son to wear female shoes. Just because you have a mental disorder and transition to female doesn't mean you can groom your child. Chris, shame on you. And it's a Snapchat from Chris in which his very young child is wearing high heels. I don't think a child that young. I mean, it happens, I guess. Children play in certain things, but a little bit of a coincidence that Chris has this going on and all of a sudden his son is wearing high heels. That's what I don't understand. All these people that it's like, there seems to be a thing with these dads who transition when they have kids that they put it on their kids. Like that one channel whose name is not coming to me. I did a video on them. They're from the UK, I believe in which the dad came out as non-binary and suddenly the kid is trans. Like, Ooh, I'm going to get so many negative comments about this. But also, there's something about the males who transition that are attracted to females that is just, it just hits different than gay males who transition. It just hits different. I, I don't care who's upset. The gay males who transition are not the ones that are making creepy posts being in the locker room in the bathrooms with women. They're not the ones that are making their kids be trans too. They're not the ones that are posting these weird things about Lolly. There's clearly something sexual in nature about it when males who are attracted to women transition. And I don't care who's mad about it. I don't care. And perhaps there can be something sexual about it when the gay males who transition do it as well. But at least that doesn't involve a power dynamic of affecting women who have less power and are more vulnerable. At least it's just with other males, right? It's like, I'm sorry. If, if you want to just be mad about me saying that, look into any and every story that has come out in the past year about Trans woman in women's prison raped inmates. Um, transgender child who has a transgender parent. Um, transgender woman takes picture exposing herself in, in uh, locker rooms. Every single one of them, without exception, is attracted to women. So am I saying that every 
male who transitions and isn't attracted to women is invalid? No, I don't think that. But it's clearly something a little different than just gay males who transitioned and just want to be pretty and have boyfriends and like, you know what I mean? It's like there's clearly something else going on and perhaps someone else can articulate in a way that isn't as bitchy as I'm doing it right now. This is just my nature. Perhaps someone smarter than me can break it down in the comments, but there are people who transition for a fetish and there's people who transition for other reasons. And is that Chris? I don't know. I wouldn't have guessed that if all of a sudden there weren't these sexual things, tweets coming out. I don't know. But like I said, I'm going to do a dedicated main channel video on this because I think it deserves it. So I'm going to keep this short, sweet, and to the point. Um, Selfish decision to transition when you have kids. Also, really creepy, really creepy tweets, dude. Um, <laughs> San Francisco board opens to reparations with $5 million payouts. San Fran, what's going on? It would be San Fran. Can we acknowledge that slavery was never legal in California? So you have a city in a state where slavery was never legal, where the families that have actual lineage in the state were never slaves. And then how do you break up who gets reparations? Because y'all know I'm 3% black. Do I get like a 3% of the 5 million? Like, whoop. I don't understand. I think I literally do have lineage in the South, by the way. I remember hearing like that um, on my mom's side, we have actual family in Texas, which is odd because I had never met them, never talked to them. Maybe I literally come from flight. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So, and where are you taking that money from? Are, are white people paying more in their taxes? So what if they literally don't have slave owners in their, in their lineage? Absolutely demented. Here's where the nuance comes in. We do have a history of giving certain groups that were systemically discriminated against in the past some sort of reparation might not be the word, but some sort of like, you know, thing to be like, let me just try to make this right. So... Am I completely against anything that could be done to maybe give something to people who objectively and are able to prove their descendants of slaves? Not necessarily. But the way that these libs go about it, it's like it doesn't make any sense. And it almost feels performative because this type of thing could never pass because the idea that you're going to take money from people who were never slave owners, never had slave owners in their family, to people who were never slaves – and never had slaves in their family, the idea you're going to do that is so, it has to be incredibly unconstitutional. So what I think is happening is these libs like to put forth this legislation that makes them look super woke, makes them look super libbed out because it plays well with their constituents. And then they get to, you know, have the positive feedback loop of like, look, we're not getting it done because everyone's racist. It's like, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. You know, I always tell this story in San Francisco, the last time I was in San Francisco was February 2020. This was a month before the pandemic. I thought the poop and needles on the sidewalks thing was a meme. I stayed in one of the nicest hotels in San Francisco. I turned a corner just walking with my friend to go get something to eat. The entire street was zombies on the street and poo, human fe fecal matter, dookie, doo-doo, and syringes. And I'm like, oh... So it wasn't a meme. This is literally just what it is here. And keep in mind, this is a month before the pandemic. And we all know how these cities went to hell during the pandemic. So shout out to you if you lived in that city and made it through. A lot of people probably didn't. So again, no reparations, Miss Girl. All right, let's watch this incredibly embarrassing clip of Matt Walsh debating a trans activist. How would you define a woman? Because you've asked other uh, people up here to define how we would define a woman. How would you define a woman? First of all, I like how this person is asking Matt Walsh's question as if that's going to be some sort of gotcha. Matt invented that question basically and destroyed every trans activist before you with that question. And you're throwing it back to him as if he can't answer it. He's going to say adult human female. Can I just say, I wish the word female did not center on Instagram. You get banned for saying it on there because 
all I want is to post a picture with the caption, adult human female. And I can't do it because I can't even use slurs for the caption I can't take it. Tranny, it's just like a hookup. Regardless, though, really embarrassing that you thought to ask Matt Walsh that question. Mr. Walsh. Uh, an adult human female. Shocker. And how don't trans people, how doesn't a transgender woman fit that definition? Female. Because they're not, they're not female. They, they, they have, they have, you said that you are a biological male, correct? I said I'm transgender. Um, I might be intersex for all we know. About uh, almost as many people in the world are transgender as intersex. And well, a lot of people don't know. See, I don't relate to this. Again, this whole, I feel like this whole podcast is just me talking about ways in which I don't relate to the trans ideology. Why is it such a negative thing to be biologically male? I don't, okay, so listen, the ways in which I line up with like traditional, like being trans is that I grew up with gender dysphoria. I didn't like certain parts of my body. I didn't like being perceived as male by people around me. However, that has nothing to do with me acknowledging or accepting or understanding that I'm biologically male and the idea that that's like negative I still to this day have not had one single person whether it's a hater or a supporter of me articulate in a way that makes any sense to me why that's something I should be ashamed of disgusted by or fearful to acknowledge and it's so weird to me it is literally the same as like someone being afraid of acknowledging the sky is blue I didn't make it so it's, it's weird and it doesn't take away from you being trans. It, it, it makes you trans. It doesn't take away from you having dignity as a human being. And that's also the weird disconnect is like conservatives who talk about how trans women are biologically male. Yeah, of course, a lot of them do it in an inflammatory way and they do it to piss people off. But I think trans activists think that like conservatives think that Maybe there's something wrong with being biologically male and they're saying that like in a way that's like they think that like no one, no one but you thinks that that's something to be ashamed of. And it's really weird. It's really weird. Well, but that's a different conversation. Intersex, that's a genetic anomaly. That's a medical condition. So let, that's a completely different conversation. That's also not a, that's not a third gender. That's just a, that's a genetic anomaly that occurs within the sex binary of male and female. Um, a, so you, what you're saying is that a quote-unquote trans woman is a female? By the definitions I'm familiar with, yes. By the definitions in your gender studies class, in your sociology class, and in your circle jerk, Miss Girl, sure. But by the definitions of like life, society, anyone with a fucking brain, not so much. So how would you define female? Through my training in healthcare, there are several different categories for how we define sex. People bring up pr chromosomes. People also bring up hormone levels. People bring up all sorts of other categories. Lots of people don't fit neatly into a gender binary, even people we don't consider to be intersex. It's a complicated spectrum. It, it's not complicated, but you also didn't, you also didn't define. To, so what is, what is a woman? What is a female? What, are, what do these words mean? It's complicated, and I know you're not going to like that answer, but that's because there are no simple answers in human biology. Let me ask you a question. You guys, well, you hang question? on. I, just let me finish. It's the sophistry for me. It's the fact that... Remember when Jeffree Star got in trouble for being like, it's complicated because these hoes make it complicated? Yeah, it is. That's exactly what you're doing. It's not a complicated spectrum. For those individuals that are intersex, it is complicated, right? And that's their issue. But it always kills me when trans people are like, for all we know, I'm intersex. Okay, well then take a fucking test and find out because otherwise you're just running your mouth. You're running your mouth and nothing of any value is even coming out. You have no idea how to speak to a conservative because you are so used to being in your circle jerk. And it's embarrassing. 
You just asked Matt Walsh what is a woman as if it was going to be some sort of own. You're embarrassing. Just let me finish. You guys like to bring up high school level biology classes a lot. I get that a lot. But people who go on to more complicated biology classes will talk about sex as a spectrum. It's not. It's not. Well, biological researchers would disagree with you. Well, and they're full of shit, the ones that would say that. There's, look. There are. All right. There are male gametes and female gametes. Oh, I had one, I had one last question. I, I just have one, I have one quick, can, we, can, we, can you come back for one second? Because this is an important question. You said you're an EMT. Yes. Okay, if you're responding, you're responding to a health emergency. Biological male, somebody with a penis is, uh, is having a medical emergency. And they say to you, um, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Would you, would you check them to see if they're having a miscarriage? Would you consider that a possibility for them? Look. <laughs> no, but that's because some people don't have body parts. Doesn't mean they're not a woman. Okay. Sounds like we've established there are some people who in principle can get pregnant and there are some people who can't. So there's two categories, otherwise known as binary. Lots of women can't get pregnant either. Yeah, but they're still of the nature to get pregnant. The only but It always kills me when they go like, some women can't get pregnant. Yeah, we know, bitch. Uh, so on the note of like medical, uh, in medical context, so... I always, when I go to the doctor, which is actually very rare because I avoid doctors, I feel like it's better to avoid doctors. I feel like hoes that are always in the doctor's office, they just be getting sick, right? It's like the more you go, the more issues you have. So like, I'm not the kind of person to just run to the doctor when I'm feeling some sort of like issue, right? I kind of just like go through it. But anyways, when I am in a medical context, one of the first things I always say to doctors is that I'm trans and that means I'm biologically male. Any and every time. Because I don't want to be treated for something that isn't applicable. I don't want to be misread. I, there's so many different issues and so many different levels that have to be tracked based on your biological sex. And trans people who don't disclose that in medical contexts can have issues. And I know that it's important for me to always do that because I am always given like the question, you know how like women know this. When you go to the doctor, the first things they ask, are you pregnant? Are you breastfeeding? I get asked that every single time. And so that's how I know, okay, there's clearly some more information needs to be given here. And it's never weird. It's never an issue. Like this denial of biological sex is so fucking weird to me. Like there are even like other really crazy tenets of trans ideology. I can understand more than that one. I just don't get it. Shout out to these hoes that try to debate people like Matt Walsh on this kind of shit. It's like you have no idea how to talk to people like that. And it shows. All right, Black China reveals she quit degrading OnlyFans and reverse plastic surgery because God wanted me to do it as a born again Christian. Shout out to Black China. Um, I just wanted to make a quick point about the proliferation of porn in modern culture because I feel like we're going to see some really disastrous effects coming soon from all of that. I also think that it's not going to be the disastrous effects that a lot of conservatives say. So a lot of conservatives say that the ease of access for which kids now can get to porn, see porn, how everyone's on OnlyFans, 18th, 18th birthday is just celebrated with OnlyFans creations, like, and they think that it makes everyone more sexual. I actually think it does the opposite. Erectile dysfunction rates are through the roof am among uh, men and teenage boys. Um, there is a higher virginity rate, especially among males than ever before. I think it actually makes society less healthy with sex in a way that makes them have less sex, which is why you see popula uh, populations declining. I don't think that people who criticize it in the way of like, oh, it's making everyone, you know, be degenerates and have more sex. I think it's actually the opposite, which is actually even deeper and darker and scarier of an issue, right? Because people need to have sex. Um, you know, I don't have anything against OnlyFans. I actually, like, made a pretty good friend recently who uh, 
does OnlyFans, and she was, like, scared to tell me because she thought I was going to judge her. I really don't judge anyone for doing that kind of stuff. I think there's a place in society for people to do that. I just think that the 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 extent for which it's been normalized is strange. How there's 18, 19-year-old girls who, before they've even given themselves a chance to have a real career, are on OnlyFans busting it open for $5 a month is just really disturbing, right? And again, if that's the path you want to go down, okay. But the, the unfortunate thing is Black China can quit OnlyFans and she'll be fine. She's in an industry where she'll never be judged for that. But the fact that so many people start that kind of stuff with no foresight of how it's going to actually affect them is the issue, right? So Black China can have her turn around. These other girls cannot, right? And that that's the problem. So shout out to y'all that be doing OnlyFans. New York private school still enforces masks outdoors and silent lunches as part of strict COVID measures. Mental illness. Disgusting. I still see, you know, Austin obviously is a liberal city. I still see people in the gym with masks. And these are not elderly, older, frail people. These are not people that are clearly going through some sort of like medical thing. These are people that look otherwise very healthy. And can you judge people's health on the surface? No. But all I know is I sure as fuck didn't see any masks before COVID. You would see maybe the, you know, women in the nail shops doing nails wear masks. And that's about it. And now you have like a fraction of the population whose brain is so broken from COVID and everything that happens that they're still wearing masks. And we talked about this on stage last night that we're in this weird period of pretending as if that entire thing didn't happen. Like it is insane to me still how there is no national conversation about how we don't shut down again. We don't allow the government to enact the amount of tyranny they did as a result of COVID again. We're all just pretending that didn't happen. That the SWAT teams didn't shut down the beaches, that people weren't locked in their homes for years. In fact, on stage, someone said, yeah, the government kept everyone in their homes for months. and It was so horrible. And I'm like, it was years. What are you talking about? The collective trauma has people remembering it differently. Has people just rather not talk about it. And it's a very scary precedent. But I'm never locking down again, are you? I'm not. Let's react to a couple of woke TikToks. Because this, these motherfuckers, let's, let's just, okay. The thing that gets me about the anti-trans conservative rhetoric around like puberty blockers for trans kids is that if they really did care about making sure children weren't being mutilated or weren't being like coerced, they would be the number one advocates for puberty blockers. Not only because they're empirically supported and because they were developed for cisgender people, but because they would realize that forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender that would be, by their terms, mutilation. Because imagine if we sat a bunch of 13-year-old cisgender boys around and we were like, hey boys, um, we know that you're boys. And we know that you've been boys as long as you've been alive and it's very clear to us that you are boys, but we just wanna be so sure. So we're actually gonna make you go through estrogen-based puberty instead. So that way, like, Ugh. when you get to the end of that road and you're 18, you can decide if you still wanted to be that boy that you, you know, always showed signs that you were. Can you imagine if we did that? That would be fucked up. But that's literally what you are doing to trans kids. It's not. Because forcing somebody to go through a puberty with a dominant hormone that is misaligned with your actual gender is a forced mutilation by conservative standards. So you would think that they would be the number one advocates for blockers and go, oh my gosh, yeah, why don't we like put a pause on this so that way you can decide and like in a couple years see how you feel. Like, I just wish they would shut up. First of all, it's amazing how he says that one of the reasons why conservatives should actually be pro-puberty blockers is because they were developed for cisgender people. How about you spe be specific about what cisgender people they were developed for? They were developed for pedophiles in prison to chemically castrate them. That's the cisgender people they were developed for, as if that's a valid argument anyways. Second of all, what the fuck are you wearing? Literally no one wants you in that crop top. Baby girl, baby boy, baby they. No one wants to see it. It's insane to me how this person's even talking about anything to do with kids when half of their TikTok videos are story times about getting gang banged. I've seen this person on my timeline before. The timeline goes like this. Oh my God, you guys, I just woke up and I got gang banged by this super hot like, group of guys in this apartment. Protect trans kids and kids need to be on pretty walker. Don't, don't talk about both. 
Don't talk about both. It's weird. And it kills me when these trans people, and I'm using that word very lightly, with the beard, very lightly. It kills me when these trans people advocate for puberty blockers and the sterilization of children when they themselves are clearly not medically transitioning at all. You are advocating for taking away the ability for these kids to procreate and have a somewhat normal life when you're not even willing to take that risk for yourself. You're a low effort, low rent, half tranny. You know nothing of commitment in life. You're not committing to being trans. You have not transitioned. You're not on any of these drugs. But yet it makes so much sense for you to get on camera and want kids to be on them. Because it works out so well. Jazz Jennings never experienced an orgasm. Never will in her life. That, that's great. That's great. Jazz Jennings never going to be able to have kids. Great. Great. But you're out here getting gangbang, sir. You're out here utilizing your full reproductive system, your full sexual organs, and you're like, kids shouldn't have that right. And this is not 2015. The information and the discourse has evolved past the safe and reversible line. No one believes that anymore. Not even, even leftists aren't arguing that anymore. Even they're kind of like, yeah, well, it kind of does like change them forever. So maybe we shouldn't keep saying that it's safe and reversible because it's not. It's not. So Mr. Gangbang, shut the fuck up. Oh, God. My name is Horace, and I'm a red-tailed hawk. In our world, I do have the body of a hawk, but while fronting, I consider myself a Therian, because I am in a human body, but my identity is still a hawk. Not all animal alters will identify this way, and I am, in fact, the only animal alter in our system who does identify this way. But I am doing my best to come to terms with living in a human body. I need fathers to stay in the home. I didn't have a great dad, but uh, I think the fact that just me landing on tranny instead of trans hawk means he was better than this person's dad. Stay in the home. Keep a relationship with your kids. Don't transition, Chris, when you have kids. Y'all ready for that video? I really want to do that video. At first I didn't because I was like, when I was first looking at that, I was like, whatever. It's like a personal choice. It's like, why is everyone mad? And then I'm like, oh, he has kids. Oh, he has a wife. Oh, he's calling the medication, you know, life-saving and all that, promoting it. We got a dragon. So stay tuned for that. I love you guys. Shout out to everyone who has been just so supportive of me recently. And y'all know that I've been kind of enjoying life and making a little less content, but I'm back on it now. And I appreciate everyone being patient with me. I love you. Please subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel. Get ready for that main channel video. Uh, subscribe to this podcast on Spotify and please give me a five-star rating if you feel so inclined. It helps me out so much and I appreciate every single one of you that does. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you in the next episode of The Blair White Projects.